Mr. Payton, this is getting to be a habit, Doctor. Would you remove your jacket? It's the second time you barge into my home unannounced and uncalled for. And roll up your sleeve. What do you want? Well, I want you to take off your jacket and roll up your sleeve. Which of my little meddlers put you up to this? Well, your grandson is worried about you. Prodded by Mrs. Cord? Persuaded is the word he used. Then go examine her. She hasn't been looking at all well lately. Mr. Payton, you'll be taking a witness stand soon. I'm perfectly capable of answering a few simple questions without any probing or poking from you. All right, have it your own way. But I'm not going to be responsible for you if you check out on the witness stand. Check out? Now, what does that mean? Drop dead. Carefully. Easy. Oh, Doctor. How is he? He wouldn't let me get near him, Mr. Court. I'm sorry. Will he be able to testify? Well, there never seemed to be any doubt about that, as far as he was concerned. Well, I'm... I'm sorry to have brought you out here for nothing, but... thanks, anyway. Mrs. Cord, why is it, as my prospective mother-in-law, you've never said anything to me about your daughter, even though I've seen you many times since her death? Well, I... You weren't. You don't know what to say? Or you do know what to say? Anna! Have those delivery men gone yet? No, sir. Well, I'll take charge. Well, that's wonderful timing, Mr. Payton. I thought you'd be off searching for more willing patients. Good day, Doctor. I'll see you again, Mrs. Court. Hmm. Very good, gentlemen. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Payton. Good day, sir. Good day. Don't you want to see my latest acquisition, Hannah? Come, come, Hannah. I want your opinion. Good as new, isn't it? Right down to the initials. B.C. Brian God. Though I must say, your late husband's brushwork isn't up to that, fellas. Nothing to say? No comment, Hannah? Why? Because it belongs there. It needs to be there. Why? To help us. Help us withstand the pressures that are coming. Hmm. My daughter's back. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. No, because we won't let it. You can slash this painting just as you did the original. It won't matter. I'll simply have another name, and another, and another, until you realize that I will not allow you or anyone else to destroy my daughter's image. It's about that girl. 
You mean Rachel? Yes, Rachel. I'm so darn mad about what we're doing to her, about what the whole silly town is doing to her. Oh, no, no, no. What do you mean? We're torturing her as if she were a witch. It's like we're in Salem a hundred years ago and not here and now. Have you seen her? Yes, I saw her this morning down by the bandstand. Poor little thing was scared stiff. She saw a policeman and she ducked and hid. So that's where she wound up. Huh? I thought I was doing the right thing. I took her to the store and told her to stay there. Then I went to the county courthouse to try to find some record of her birth, you know, to find out if she's of age. Hmm. A little hard to tell about girls her age. I know, I know. Get on with it. Get on with it. Well, the boys found her. It wasn't their fault. But Rodney said something. I don't know exactly what. But it seemed to hit the button and boom, she just exploded. Well, she's down at the police office now. They're going to ask her questions, the district attorney and all. And the whole thing is all messed up. Oh, no. We've lost her. We've lost her. Good. What do you mean, good? I mean good. How long do you think she can last? She's just a child. She can't be buffeted and questioned forever. She'll fall down in a heap. She'll need a head doctor. Don't you understand that if we've lost this girl, we've lost the last chance we've ever had of tracking down Allison? Once those juvenile authorities get their hands on that girl, they'll simply put her back on her farm and that'll be it. Don't you understand that? Yes, I understand, but you don't. You've got it all backwards, like that type there. And neither does Rodney understand. You cannot torture another human being like that. It ain't right. Now, I've said my say. Don't you think I've... I haven't thought about that. Don't you think I care about a young girl that's frightened and fighting like a caged animal? Fighting to ward off all those questions? We have a terrible choice to make here, haven't we, Dad? We can think about Allison. Or we can think about this stranger to us, this Rachel Wells. Now, that's a terrible choice to have to make. But we have to make it. I'm sorry I spoke. not Allison. I miss you, Mother. Who are you? Do you miss me? Why do you people do this? Is that my baby brother crying? What are you doing? Tell him I'll see him soon. Real soon. Stop it! I can't talk anymore, Mother. Goodbye. Allison, she sounded a little bit like her at first. But the connection was so poor, she seemed so far away. Oh, sweetheart. She said she missed me. Then she hung up. Allison wouldn't call and hang up like that. But she knew about the baby. But it was in the paper, Connie. Every crack but the dime picks us as a perfect target. Allison could call someday soon. Our number one son is paging us. Oh, he just wants to be held. Darling, it wasn't Allison. I know. I want to see that girl. The one with Allison's bracelet. All right. Don't humor me, Elliot. When the police find her, I want to talk to her. All right. You will. continuing story of Peyton Place.
I won't care what I have to do to drag it out of him, what rules I have to break. I'll make him tell me everything. Our lives run a parallel course, Elliot. Whatever affects me affects you. I don't need your regrets to survive. And I'm not one of your soldiers. Gordon! Gordon! What's happened? 